Tyler's Kitchen for those of you who have subscribed. Thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying our update. And for those of you who, well, are new to Kylie's Kitchen, welcome. You can always subscribe and you can always head to lifestyle.com.au to get many more recipes. And if you're a bit of a fitness fanatic like me, we've got some great videos and some great tips every Friday for you. So I hope you do enjoy those. Today though, we are going to do my cranberry and almond granola bars. Kylie's homemade granola bars. I'm excited about it. I hope you are too. And let's show you what you're going to need. You're going to need a chopping board, a knife. You'll also need a saucepan, some form of a spatula to do a little bit of stirring. Remember, you're only a real chef if you Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> ah, if you've seen my other videos, you'll know what I mean by that. You will need some baking paper and you'll also need some form of a square or oblong dish so that you can actually make your bars in. You will also need cling wrap and some foil towards the end. You are going to need some sultanas. We'll show you how many measurements. If you're just looking over here, you'll soon find out. You'll also need some light brown sugar or brown sugar. It's just not the dark brown. Roughly two tablespoons of cranberries and you're also going to need roughly about two tablespoons of almonds. Uh, these are just a natural almond. That's about 22 to 24 almonds. If you're wondering how many it is, I did count them. We are going to need some honey, that is going to stick our granola bars together, some kosher salt. Did you know it even existed? How old is this can? And I'm still using it. Extra, um, extra light olive oil to be able to spray. So before we set our granola bars onto the foil in the pan, we do need a little bit of that oil. You are going to need some carob chocolate. It can be plain carob chocolate. Today I am using mint because I love the smell and the flavor of mint. We're going to need some measures, a teaspoon, a tablespoon. Can you see this one? One eighth of a teaspoon. That will be for your kosher salt. I can not only imagine you're wondering why would you put salt in a bar? You're also going to need some unsalted butter. As you can see, I've already used this because you are in Kylie's kitchen. You'll need roughly anywhere between 120 to 130 grams of rolled oats. We will be toasting these in the oven. As we speak, I've got the oven sitting on 180 degrees, so it is warming up. It usually takes about 10 minutes because we will be toasting our own oats and our almonds. I have added some cashew nuts, probably about one tablespoon of cashew nuts, just to add a little bit difference in this granola bar and also some vanilla extract, not vanilla essence. The difference, if you don't know, vanilla essence is the one that comes in that little bottle and you would normally put it in maybe like cake mixtures or some other recipes where they ask for vanilla essence, which is the liquid. This is actually vanilla extract and you'll see when I actually get that one eighth of a teaspoon out of this. Um, once we actually cut open the vanilla bean, you'll actually see all the vanilla come out. And it'll be looking like this. We are going to start to make our cranberry almond granola bars. I hope you're in for the ride. Let's get cooking. Okay, so I have just prepared myself some of that baking paper because what we're going to do is toast our own oats. Have you ever wondered how to toast them? It's so easy, we're just gonna put them in the oven. It's like not rocket science. Here are my 24 almonds. Um, if you want to just not be fancy, just chop them up with a knife. Nice sharp knife, that's how I do it. Ready, pronto, and then we have some cashew nuts today. I say today because normally I make them without the cashew nuts, but you know, I like to mix it up. Be creative, get in there. Okay, so we are going to grab our nuts. I like, I like just to slide the, the board off the bench and then nothing falls on the floor, it all falls in your hand. Okay. They are meant to be chewy and like a bit more sort of like of a tacky bar. 
That is what they are. They are a chewy granola bar. I am going to now put that in the oven for about five minutes. I'm going to see if it's all toasted and it will be quite toasted on the top, not overly toasted. And then what I'll do is I'll just get a spatula and then I'll move them around a little bit and then I'll actually toast it for another three minutes. So that's eight minutes in total, toasted in the oven on 180 degrees. We'll be back when we are toasted. So we are at the stove. We've got our saucepan on a medium to high temperature. We are going to melt together the butter. So we've got 30 gram or 25 to 30 grams of butter. We've also got 25 grams of the brown sugar. And then we've got three tablespoons. So about 60 grams of honey. And also our vanilla extract and one eighth, I know. But remember, this is making about six bars and they're only tiny bars so if you want to make 12 or 24 you're obviously going to increase it and double it if you're making 12 so don't forget the sugar because we still want you to have the sugar into your recipe and it was a um oh it's salt sorry salt i'm thinking sugar because we're talking brown sugar as well so make sure that everything mixes perfectly Don't want to miss a drop. And keep stirring that around. In goes our vanilla extract. I know that's rubber. <laughs> You're not meant to put it on anything too hot, but if it's nice and quick, you'll be fine. So we've just got to make sure that you mix this super well. I can actually see the, um, the vanilla extract is, uh, has a few clumps in there. And so the reason I am not leaving my saucepan is because we're only here for probably a minute or two. But we want to make sure that everything does mix very well. If you could smell right now, this honey, it's so sweet so beautiful and the vanilla in it oh gosh it reminds me of those days when i was younger i think in year three we made toffee oh it smells so good can't remember how to make toffee might have to google that one now i can actually see the the black or that really really dark brown vanilla extract dissipating into the honey and it's bubbling quite nicely and that is all you really need to do. It is not that hard. I know it was a little bit intricate when it comes to the grams and the weight that is needed for the ingredients, but it'll be worth it. And it's always worth it if you make the bigger quantities. And you can always freeze these bars. There's no reason why you can't freeze them. They'll probably just be nice and tough and hard. So it'll be like a hard muesli bar. We're ready to rock. We're going to let this sit for five minutes on its own, and then we're going to mix it all together. So I'm just going to let this sit for about five minutes and then I can see and smell my toasted oats and also my toasted cashews and almonds. Oh, doesn't that just look good? Depending on if you want these to be quite sticky or if you'd like them to be a little bit more dry, what I have done is I've made a little bit more of the cashew nuts, the oats and the almonds so that if you just don't use a pinch or two, you can have it a little bit chewier. But if you wanted it to be a little bit more solid and a little more stuck together and um, a drier muesli, then you can add a little bit more. So I have toasted a little more so that we can then mix this all together. So in goes the gorgeous and you do have to be reasonably quick. I'm going to pop in some of those cranberries and those sultanas. Just pushing all that through. I 
Okay, I'm going to scrape that off the spatula with another spatula and then we're going to put it together in our dish. So now we've got our dish that we're going to place our granola recipe into. Going to grab some foil, put the foil down, wrap that over. You would probably use this whole dish if you were going to do, well, obviously you would if you were going to do 24, but if you're going to do anywhere up from 12, you'll probably use this whole dish. And then we're going to spray the sides and the base with a bit of oil. We're going to get our granola. Now you've got two options in how you want to do this. And I think one of the easiest is you can have a spatula or wet your gloves. So wet your gloves and then just pat your granola down. And I'm going to go long and narrow today. As I mentioned, I have done just enough for, oh look, I'd probably say four bars just to make it nice and easy or six thin bars. But I want my bars to be a little thick, a little thicker, like a proper muesli bar. Hopefully you can see exactly what I'm trying to do here. I'm keeping the edges in my left hand and then I'm patting them down with the right so just so it sticks together this is one of the main things that you want to happen just press it down for a decent amount of time can you see now why I like cooking with gloves would you really want to come over to my house and me offer you a muesli bar and then really like behind the scenes you're thinking oh my god were her mufti hands like pressing down on my muesli bar if she had dry skin do i have a piece of dry skin in my muesli yeah we don't want muesli that dry baby look at that it's looking good and you know it's reasonably healthy because you've put everything in it depending on what you think healthy is and what uh what isn't so healthy so you can always use raw honey as well. That's another good one. Okay, if you can see that, look at that. Looking good, I'm so excited. Um, and then the next thing that we have, which is super easy and yummy, depending on if you want it all covered in chocolate, you can use the carob chocolate. Mine is carob mint on the top of all of the bar, or you can be sneaky and do what I do. Some people don't like chocolate, some people don't like carob. You can use milk chocolate, dark chocolate, you can use whatever, you can use whatever you like. Yeah. And sprinkle it over the top. I will go halfway. So we've got half with chocolate, half without. And just press that chocolate in. And because of the warmth as well of the muesli already, ah, it's gonna melt just perfectly. And you'll see what it looks like in just a moment because this needs to set in the fridge for two hours. And I've always wanted to say this, this is what I prepared earlier. So this is what I prepared earlier. This has been sitting in the fridge for two hours. Did I tell you that I just wanted to say that? This is what I prepared earlier. Um, so I put Gladrath over the top in the fridge for two hours. And as you can see, you've got your foil base. We had that uh, olive oil spray underneath, and that's because we want to make sure it comes out nice and easy. So let's see how easy it is. So that's peeling away really nicely. So here you have it, foil is off. And as you can see, I did half mint carob chocolate and half without. We've got beautiful, cranberries in here, some almonds, some cashew nuts, got your toasted oats and now you've got some beautiful granola bars. And there you have it, voila, your own cranberry almonds granola bars. Nice and sticky and if you leave them in the fridge they will become a little bit harder. So if you want them to be harder just eat them a little bit quicker from the fridge. But my favourite part as we all know is gloves off because I get to taste. And I'm going to go for the one that doesn't have the chocolate today. So as you can see the consistency is sticky because we've just taken them out of the fridge. And mm, they're yummy and they're chewy. 
If you like chewy, you'll love these. Mmm. They're so divine. I hope you like them as much as we do here on Kylie's Kitchen. Now you've got two options in how you want to do this. Oops! That's not one of them! And back! Hi! Thanks for joining. 